I'm going to be starting uh, a new series. We just finished the book of Acts and hopefully it has shown us things that we never knew about Pentecost and the church and and I was talking with the Lord and I said, Lord, I, where do I go from here? And the Lord began to show me what he had been doing through me. And I didn't really understand completely. And, uh, and we're going to be starting in the book of John. But um, I, the Lord said that we've got a little bit of work to do before we start with the book of John. And the Lord took me back to Isaiah. And in the first chapter of Isaiah, God, whom is very loving and forgiving, let's put it that way, He knows the treachery that lives within us. He knows the devices and schemes of Satan that has plagued the Israel that plagues the church. But God has not left us alone. And I want to share some revelations I had this week about the Word. And that's what John was predominantly about, the Word. In verse 2 of Isaiah 1, it says, Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth. And I think that the Lord is speaking, Hear, like, listen, like, I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. The ox knows its owner, and the donkey its master. But Israel does not know. My people do not consider. Alas, sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity. He's talking about Israel. A brood of evil doers. Look at the world today. Children who are corruptors. They have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked to anger the Holy One of Israel. Have you ever provoked God to anger? They have turned away backward. Why should you be stricken again? You will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick. The whole heart faints. From the sole of the foot even to the head, there is no soundness in it. But wounds and bruises and putrefying sores they have not been closed or bound up or soothed with ointment. Your country is desolate. Your cities are burned with fire. Whoa. Isn't it sounding like New York? <laughs> Strangers devour your land in your presence. Foreigners 
have come in and taken over your land. And it is desolate as overthrown by strangers. And so the daughters of Zion is left. As a booth in a vineyard. A shelter in a vine grove. As a hut in a garden of cucumbers. As a besieged city. Unless the Lord of hosts had left to us a very small remnant we should have become like Sodom and Gomorrah. And then it skips over to chapter, this is verse chapter 1, verse 16. Wash yourselves, make yourselves clean. Put away the evil of your doings from before my eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do good. Seek justice. Rebuke the oppressor. Defend the fatherless. And plead for the widow. Come now. Let us reason together says the Lord, though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. And though they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured by the sword, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. And then I wanted to flip over to Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14, and the Lord kind of refreshed this into my mind. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Pay attention. God is going to give Israel a sign. God is going to give us a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son. Well, that doesn't really mean a virgin. And shall call his name Emmanuel. God is with us. Now I want you to remember these words as we are, this is the introductory sermon into John. And what I'm going to be telling you today is significant for the understanding of what John is saying and doing. Isaiah called to the prophet, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne high and lifted up and his train has filled the temple above it stood seraphim angels each one had six wings with two he covered his face with two he covered his feet down below and with two he flew. And one cried to another and said, Holy, holy, holy 
is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Follow with me as we journey. In the book of Ezekiel, God spoke to Israel again. I was among the captives by the river Shebar. This is the first chapter of Ezekiel. That the heavens were opened and I saw visions. Now, that's what Isaiah, he looked up and I, I'm always saying it's right there. It's right there. If, if you could remove the veil you'd look up and you'd see what's really there the throne that's what happens to Isaiah and that's what happened to Ezekiel he, he was sitting here and all of a sudden the blinders came off and the heavens were opened and I saw visions of God I saw visions of God. And then I looked and behold, a whirlwind was coming out of the north. A great cloud with raging fire engulfing it. We, we have seen Lahaina Maui. We've seen year after year the destructive forces of the wind blowing a raging fire it, it doesn't take imagination it just takes a little bit of memory and a, you can rewind and watch the whole thing and brightness was all around it so here's a fire coming into his view. And brightness was all around it, radiating out of its midst, like the color of amber, out of the midst of the fire. Our God is a consuming fire because he is holy. It's that simple. Holiness is as a fire in judgment. Also from within it came the likeness of four living creatures. Okay, out of the midst of the vision of God came a vision of four living creatures. Now, this sermon is in preparation for John, but it's also confirming what I've been doing for the last two years. In dealing with Mark and Luke, and now John. And this is going to tell you what if, if you go back and watch these sermons on YouTube, you will hear what I'm telling you. You will see firsthand what God has shown old Roy in reality. Also from within it came the likeness of four living creatures. Remember that. And this was their appearance. They had the likeness of man. So all four of these beasts had features of a man. Each one had four faces. And each one had four wings. Their legs were straight. And the soles of their feet were like the soles of calves hooves. They sparkled like the color of burnished bronze. And the hands of a man are under their wings. So they had wings and here they had hands. 
on their four sides. And each one of the four had faces and wings. Now, now again, artists have tried to duplicate this. Forget it. You cannot remember and duplicate what is said here. So just watch and listen as we develop. I've got a ways to go here. Their wings touched one another. So there's four, four creatures facing all four directions. And they've got wings and they're covering their eyes so that they can't see and their feet so that they can't you can't see their feet where it's going or their eyes as to what it's looking at but each one went straight forward as for the likeness of their faces each one had the face of a man each of the four had the face of a lion on the right side, each of the four had the face of an ox. On the left side, and each of the four had the face of an eagle. Now these four words, man, lion, ox, and eagle. I want you to remember that because we're going to be looking at it more clearly as we go along here. Thus their faces, thus were their faces, and their wings stretched upward. Two wings of each one touched one another, and two covered their bodies. And each one went straight forward. They went wherever the Spirit wanted them to go. And they did not turn when they went. I, I, I couldn't read on. It, it's, it's exciting. I read Ezekiel 1, 2, and 3 on your own. And, and let that develop. And I'm going to turn over now to uh, Ezekiel 10. And it said, uh, well, again, when they went forward, they went toward any of their four directions. So it's talking about, for two chapters, these four beasts that are coming out of the midst of the presence of God. What in the world could it mean? We are curious, are we? are we not? Do we want to know what is going on here? Would you like to know before we leave here today what's happening? You're gonna. When they went, they went forward toward any of their four directions and they did not turn aside. They just went and they were all seeing all engulfed in what they were doing. But followed in directions, the head was facing. So whichever direction the face was going, that's the direction they went. Remember, man, an ox, an eagle, a lion. A lion, thank you. <laughs> Already forgot, see? That's it. And they did not turn aside. Remember those four because they're going to be coming up again and again. And, and God is revealing to us the meaning of what this is. And their whole body with their back their hands, their wings, and the wheels that the four had were full of eyes all around, all seeing, all 
knowing. This was from God. And the four wheels, they were called in my hearing, wheel. Each one had four faces. The first face was the face of a cherub. The second face, the face of a man. The third face, the face of a lion. And the fourth, the face of an eagle. A man, a cherub, a lion, and an eagle. All right, let's continue on. That was God's preliminary exposure to Israel of who he was. This was a preliminary exposure that God gave them and it is purely by the revelation of God that you will be able to see it. In the book of Revelation, and I'm gonna I'm gonna start in the fourth chapter because in verse one, because again, like Isaiah and Ezekiel, people who have experienced that, you, you see. I can't hardly do this without reverence and bowing and saying, when I see what's there, I'm not going to be pointing up here. I'm going to be laying on my face. After these things, these things being that Jesus stood in the midst of the church and he judged the church. And he said, these things I have against you, but these things you've done well. So the church has messed up and the church has had times of glory. But Jesus said, after these things, after I have dealt with the church, I looked and behold, a door standing open in heaven. The veil is about to be removed for Isaac, for John, the revelator. And the first voice, which I heard was like a trumpet speaking to me saying, come up here. Now, the rapture of God for believers will be exactly like that. Jesus will be saying, Church, arise! And everyone who believes in Jesus Christ will be translated immediately, just like this. It says, Come up here, and I will show you things which must take place after this. And so John was literally raptured up into heaven. Immediately I saw in the Spirit. And behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. Oh, a throne is in heaven right up there, and there's one on the throne. And he who sat on it was like a jasper and a sardis stone in appearance. And there was a rainbow around the throne in appearance like an emerald. God is not a man sitting on a throne. He is light. And the throne and the midst of the fire, remember? Out of the midst of the presence of God came fire and bright light. And here we see the same thing. John saw bright light coming forth. That was the holiness and the presence of God. Around the throne were 24 thrones. And on the thrones I saw 24 
elders. Personally, I believe people are saying, no, it's all New Testament. No, I believe that there are 12 thrones for the 12 patriarchs of the Old Testament and 12 apostles of Jesus clothed in white robes and they all had crowns on their heads and from the thrones proceeded lightnings from the presence of God came lightnings and thunderings and voices seven lamps of fire were burning before the throne of God. So there's seven lampstands with flames coming out of them that represent, and it says, which are the seven spirits of God. Now in Revelation, it talks about the seven spirits of God that were in the throne. And it's the seven messengers or angels over the churches the seven churches. And so these seven spirits are directing the seven church ages of all time. And before the throne, there was a sea of glass. Now sea is a, a symbol for all of humanity. Out of the sea will come forth Satan and the beast and, and it's talking about the sea of humanity but in this one the sea is glass like glass they're crystal it's pure it's like glass that has not been messed with there's nothing inside it is clean and pure and in the midst of the throne and around the throne were four living creatures full of eyes in front and in back. Now, these are given to let you know that that's what's there. Where I don't care what you see down here. You see by faith what God says is there. I, Ezekiel, Isaiah, John, they saw four living beasts around the throne day and night flying ministering the first living creature was like a lion oh there it is again the second living creature like a calf the third living creature like a man and the fourth living creature was like a flying eagle exactly the same thing pictured as Ezekiel and Isaiah saw the four living creatures each having six wings were full of eyes around and within and they do not rest day or night saying holy 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. And whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to Him who sits on the throne who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before Him which, who sits on the throne and worships Him who lives forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne saying you are worthy O Lord to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things and by your will they exist and were created that is a preliminary to the book of John I've got one more passage. Let me look back here. I think it's in Revelation. Yes. Uh, 
Now I saw heaven opened. Again, John, that was at the beginning of the book of Revelation, what I read to you. This is two-thirds of the way through the tribulation. So John has just experienced all hell breaking loose on earth. He said, Now I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And he who sat on him was called Faithful and True. And in righteousness he judges and makes war. We, we, have, we can't imagine Jesus being a warrior. We think of him as a loving, put all the kids on his lap, and, and, and just, a, just a good old boy, and just loving and pat you on the back and be nice to one another, loving and caring. But it says here, in righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes were like a flame of fire. And on his head were many crowns. He had a name written on that no one knew except himself. So we think of him having King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He was clothed with a robe dipped in blood. Uh-oh. There is always mentioned a white robe. They were all clothed with white robes. Now he has on a white robe that has been dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. And we're trying to figure what in the world is all this that's going on. The four beasts that come out of the presence of God. And now Jesus is standing here in a white robe, but the bottom of his robe is dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. And in the armies in heaven, and the armies in heaven, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, followed him on white horses. <laughs> you like to ride horses? You're going to. We shall be with him when he returns to do his thing. Now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword that with it he should strike the nations and he himself will rule them with a rod of iron. He himself treads the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. How many of you would like to see judgment come to the nations that have persecuted Christians, who have not cared for their children, who have plagued the world? We want justice. God has said, Wait, hold your judgment. There's one who comes who will judge. But it's not now. We just see the grace of God. Hallelujah. We don't see God's wrath, His fierceness. Israel counted upon God's grace and mercy. Uh, the word for love in Hebrew is chesed. And it means loving kindness. God's love towards Israel was loving kindness. He, he nurtured Israel. He had mercy. And they rejected His love and mercy. And God's Spirit has been upon the, the earth 
for 2,000 years in the church, we have experienced the compassion, the love, the grace of God. So, I turn over to the book of John and I start with these words. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him. And without Him, nothing was made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. What is the Word of God? The Word of God is the revelation of the knowledge of God. How in the world did God reveal His Word to mankind? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The four beasts that proceed out of heaven. Matthew shows the lion of the tribe of Judah. Mark shows the servant of God, the servant of man. He was lowly. He did not have a genealogy. Matthew has a genealogy, but it begins with, with King David. Mark does not. He was a servant. Servants, slaves do not have a genealogy. Luke was a man. Who does Luke begin his genealogy with? Adam, man. He portrays God as a man. God as the lion of the tribe of Judah. God as the suffering servant. And now we're getting ready to study John. And he was the eagle. And it represented God. Jesus was God. He was God. He was man. He was a servant. And he's the king of kings to come. Amen. Let us pray. Oh God, we thank you for your revelation. We thank you for the Word. The Word of God is alive and living in us. And Father, we have consumed and eaten this Word of God. And it has given us life. We believe in Jesus. We believe in you, O oh Lord. We know that you are. And Lord, I know that the world does not know you. But Lord, you've put upon us a burden to share the knowledge of God with the world. Oh, Father, we give you thanks in Jesus' name.